essential to what the Lord wants you to do, and you don't get what he wants you to have because really in your heart of hearts you doubt it, even though you'd like to. You'd like to believe it. You say it. You'd like to believe it, but in your heart of hearts, which really only you and the Lord know that. You know it? I mean, you can put on a big front and you can say all the right things, but in your heart of hearts you know, I don't believe that any more than the man in the moon. Right? But before you get out of here today, you're going you're gonna to know how to believe it in your heart and then confess it with your mouth. Because everything you get from God in Romans, it says this. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and God has raised him from the dead, amen? So you have to believe it in your heart before you confess it in your mouth. What's the greatest thing? It's like I was talking earlier. You know, praise God. You know, when you, when you lose somebody like my grandmother or my mom or anybody else, and I see, and I know they're going to heaven, I'm telling you, I cannot grieve. I cannot grieve. I have to praise God. Praise the Lord. And even though I know, boy, I'm going to miss them, I can't grieve because I know their, their status. I know their environment i know their lifestyle now praise god this thing this look this thing is real <laughs> this thing is real and then when we get there you know we just all get all you know when jesus walked into to the uh, i forget maybe a teenage girl had died or something and he said no she's sleeping and he walked in and it says they they laughed him to scorn when he came in, they started mocking him and laughing at him because he is, he is the son of God and he knows there's this whole other realm that's available that you, can, that you can live in. And then he put everybody out and he said, look, I am the resurrection and the life. Rise up. Rise up. But he put all the unbelievers out. Sometimes you need to remove from your system everything that doesn't believe in what God says exists right now. You can't put it all in the temporary because it's way bigger than the temporary. And my grandmother's alive and well and more vibrant than, the, than she ever was on earth. She lived 104 years on earth, but the last five she spent in a bed. And if she was still walking around and enjoying life, I wouldn't even have said, ma'am, you ought to just go on to be with the Lord. But she wasn't. She was bed fast for five years because she broke her hip. I said, ma'am, you ought to go be with the Lord. You can run again. You can enjoy the things you love so much about life again. And praise God, when she went, I could only say, praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. She's free. She's free again. Praise the Lord. She's not, she's not imprisoned in a worn-out body. A 104-year-old worn-out body. Her, her, her spirit was vibrant as it could be. But now she's liberated, and now she can run through the fields of grace in Jesus' powerful name. Say praise the Lord. I pray you believe it today in Jesus' name. I pray you don't say, boy, I hope that's true. Well, <laughs> there's no hope about it. It's true. Praise God. Praise God. But we want to bring the kingdom of God down into our lives here, and we want to live a supernatural lifestyle here in the earth because the same God we're going to spend eternity with now is with us here and if God is for you who can be against you and I pray you don't dumb down the gospel to your lifestyle but I pray you believe the gospel to where it comes into your life and changes it in a supernatural way to where you're walking in the supernatural blessings and favor of God in the earth realm amen, amen. praise the Lord okay and so then and, and a lot of people say well you know you talk about faith a lot but faith is important don't you think because you it's impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. You must believe he is, and you must believe he'll reward you if you seek him. Do you believe he is? Do you believe he's God right now? Do you believe that Jesus is on the throne right now? Do you believe that his spirit, the Holy Spirit, do you believe the Holy Spirit of God is here right now? Okay, so the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead so he's dead. His body's there. Three days. The same spirit that came down, raised him up, raised his soul up out of the bowels of hell, 
brought his spirit back into his body. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now dwells in your mortal body. The same quickening Holy Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, from the bowels of hell, now dwells in your mortal body. But you have to say, you know, I believe that. And Lord, anoint me with that spirit. Anoint me for supernatural lifestyle in Jesus' name. Anoint me to where I'm not depressed. Anoint me to where I'm not fearful. Anoint me to where I don't dread the day. Anoint me to where I'm excited to live a supernatural life with God in my life in Jesus' powerful name. Amen? Okay, and then uh, Romans 14, 23. I don't think you can ever preach faith too much because what look at that last line for whatever is not a faith is what whatever is not a faith is sin whatever is not a faith is sin so whenever you take God's promises and whenever you take what God says that he has done for you and that who you are in this life if you're operating in anything outside of that it's sin now you don't want to be condemned about that he's just saying where whenever you're not walking in your faith in me you're kind of drifting into places that, 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 that I don't have prepared for you and that uh, I can't bless you the way I want. I can only bless you when you're in faith, supernaturally. I can only bless you when you're in faith in the earth realm. But if you stay in faith, whatever is not a faith is sin. So when you begin to go, well, I don't know, you know, no, I don't know if I can walk in health or not. You know, I had uh, my next door neighbor that lives, Caddy Corner, to me, she, she said, uh, Oh, I've just had the flu so bad, I've been terrible. And then her grandson, he came into the restaurant yesterday and he said, Have you seen Mama all lately? I said, Yeah, I just saw her while gone. He said, He said, he said, Grandpa found her laying on the floor. He couldn't even get her up for three or four minutes, called mom and thought she was dead. Can we live a life that is marked with the health of God? But not if you don't believe. What is our access in? Jesus has risen from the dead. By my stripes, you are healed. <laughs> now, now, I'm going to tell you, you've got to believe that before you can walk in that and not doubt in your heart. You can't get saved and go to heaven unless there comes something into your heart where you go, you know, I'm going to believe this. I'm going to believe Jesus rose from the dead, and I'm going to... I'm going to take the advice of somebody, or maybe just the Holy Spirit himself, and I'm going to say, Lord, come into my heart. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior and forgive me of my sins. Now, see, you've got to believe that in your heart, and then you've got to confess it with your mouth. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's the same with every, every promise of God. We start there, but he says, that's going to get you to live forever and praise the name of the Lord. But I want to deliver the kingdom of God down into your natural life in the earth that you will be a sign and a wonder to those who don't believe that my spirit rests upon you in Jesus' name. Amen? Uh, so, what, so whatever is not a faith is sin. And it's impossible to please God without what? Amen? So I declare you have the spirit of faith. And I declare you can believe. Why do you think we don't believe? I'll tell you, most of it is in pride. Most of it is in pride. Humble yourself. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. Humble yourself. Why would you have to humble yourself to believe the word of God? Because it's not natural. It's supernatural. And so you have to humble yourself, and you say, so even though I might be mocked, even though I might be ridiculed, even though I might have people say that you're a religious fanatic, even though I might have people say, you, you believe that? You believe you can walk in health? You believe you can, you can be supernaturally blessed financially by a God you can't see? See, you have to believe it. And then, but when you believe it, then God says, I'll perform it. But you have to humble yourself. And then you humble yourself, then you have to say, I believe this. <laughs> because again, whatever, whatever's in your heart has to be proclaimed by your mouth. Amen? But if you do, God says, okay, humble yourself under your mighty hand. So if there's a promise of God you find hard to believe, just do this. Say, Lord, I humble myself. I humble myself. I know that's hard to believe, but I humble myself, and, and I declare to you, Lord, I believe your word. I believe your word in Jesus' name. And let it overtake my life. I humble myself. 
And then, uh, I don't know, somebody read to me uh, uh, 1 John, probably 5, 3. Here, can you get that, Darren? I know I didn't have it on there. But I'm going to tell you, there's a way. There's, no matter where you're at in life right now, do you think you're on the highest road you could possibly be on in terms of your relationship with God and supernatural, supernatural blessings manifesting in your life? Do you think you're on the highest road you can be on? Or do you think there's, a, there's actually, there, it says deep calls into deep. Do you think there's a place where you could go that actually would be uh, in, in, a, in a place of elevation in your relationship with the Lord? The Lord says, I'm, wanting to, I'm, I'm, calling, lift, look, I'm calling you higher. This one thing I do, I forget those things that are behind, and I press forward to the high calling. There's a high calling. God says, no, come on up here. It's a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said, no, I know I'm blessing you, but I'm going to tell you, you can go higher in Jesus' name. You can be blessed greater in Jesus' powerful name. Unless you're demonstrating the full uh, manifestation of the Son of God on the earth, you can come higher in Jesus' name. Glory to God. This is the love of God. This is the love. Do you love God? This is the love of God. This is the love of God that we keep His commandments. This is the love of God. We keep His commandments. You believe what He says. Do you believe what He says? Do you believe you're blessed? Do you believe that everything you put your hand to is supernaturally blessed? Amen? Do you believe it? Say, heck, heck yeah, I believe it. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See, what happens is when you start moving around a little bit and you start... Uh, getting yourself energized in the Word of God, then, then the enemy has to, he has to flee in Jesus' name. Staying steadfast in the faith, and he's got to go. Amen? Amen. Say, I'm blessed. Amen. I'm supernaturally blessed. Amen. You are. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So just believe God. Amen. So then uh, uh, Mark eleven fourteen. Do what? Did I tell you all? You missed that scripture? Come up here, I'll pray. You're messing with that left elbow, brother. <laughs> Jesus is walking along, and, 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 and so he's hungry. And he's got his disciples with him, and he sees a fig tree with leaves on it. He walks over there. The fig tree doesn't have any figs on it. It's not even in season. So he expects, he expects it to be instant in season and out of season. Amen? And so anyway, he says, he cursed that fig tree. He said, let there not any figs ever grow in this tree again. And then those guys, they just walk on, and they go on in, into town. The next day, they're coming back, and, and Peter, you know, and, and that fig tree that had leaves on it the day before, now it's all dried up, and the roots are coming up. I mean, it's totally dead. Okay, do I have it? Okay, then... Keep, keep, can you go on further with that? And so then, and, and so Peter goes, that's okay, brother. Peter goes, Lord, the fig tree you cursed yesterday has dried up its roots. But see, the Lord wasn't surprised. They were surprised. But the Lord wasn't surprised. That's the power, that's the power of, of having the word in your heart and believing. Now, see, the Lord believed. And they heard it, and he knew they heard it. And he said, I curse this tree right here. There's not going to, there'll never be a fig, fig grow off this tree again. They're coming back the very next day. It's already happened. But see, the Lord, he knows the power of faith. He knows the power of faith that works. And when he said it, see, when they were coming back the next day, he was not surprised at all. Everybody else was shocked. I'm just saying there's a place when you believe and you speak, it happens. You will have whatsoever you say. Amen? And, and, and God's serious about this stuff because he, he loves you. And he doesn't want you living like you lived before you knew him. He wants you to, he wants you to go into a brand new place where you're experiencing the supernatural. <laughs> the supernatural moving of his spirit over the things in your life. Okay, and then Mark. Uh, Eleven twenty-two. But you got to have faith. Did Jesus have faith in the Father? He said, "I don't even do anything unless the Father tells me to." I've got faith in the Father. 
How much do you trust Jesus? How much do you really trust him? Do you know he loves you? Do you know he cares for you? Do you know he wants the best for you? What about the Father? Do you know how much the Father loves you? The Father loves you because you confess Jesus. So the same way the Father loves Jesus, now the Father loves you because you've been made one with Jesus. And you say, well, sometimes I don't act like a son of God. He said, I know. That's, the way, that's why Jesus went to the tree, and that's why he died for all your sins, and that's why he took all your curses, because when he rose up, now I only see you through him. Amen? And so they're saying, Lord, look, you cursed this tree, it's dead. How could that happen? And he said, have faith in God. And really, if you look at the translation on that, if, if, if you look at the old King James and even the translation in the, in the Greek, it says, have the faith of God. It doesn't really say that, have faith in God. It says, have the faith of God. Have the faith of God. Well, what was the faith of God? The faith of God is, whatever Jesus says, it happens. Have the faith of God. It's not like, I'm saying this, and I wonder if it's going to happen. Believe it in your heart and speak it out, and it will happen. Amen? I mean, have the faith of God, because the faith of God is what brings everything into creation. Amen? I mean, when, when uh, look at the, pull, pull that up in, uh, we'll go, and he, go to Hebrews first, Hebrews 11.3. Because it's a God kind of faith. Have, have the faith of God. Here's the faith of God. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen are not made of things which are visible. That's the faith of God. That whatever you see is not made of physical things. It's made of faith in, in the heart, spoken out, and it makes it. Stay with me for a minute. Wake up. Listen to this. By faith, we understand how things are made by the Word of God. By faith, so that the things which are seen, everything you see is not made of things that can be seen. So when Jesus walked by that fig tree and he said, he said, Lord, look, look, that fig tree you cursed yesterday has died up at the roots. He said, yeah, have faith in God. And that's what happens. That whatever you say, when you believe it in your heart, as the Son of God, listen, we've got the Spirit of God inside of us. So when you believe the promise and word of God, and you speak it out. But you got to believe it here. When you believe it here, and did you think Jesus believed it when he said, uh, there's never going to be a fig tree grow off this tree again? He believed it. He spoke it. That fig tree just, shh, just dried up. Amen? Okay, now you've got, he, the, so they're saying, how do you do that? He said, have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. That, but you've got to believe it here before you speak it here. You've got to believe it here before you speak it there. And I pray wherever you don't believe it, that you take yourself to task and you begin, you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and you start believing the word of God because you can, you can just say all this stuff, but they're empty words unless you believe it here. You can say, by his stripes I'm healed. But if you don't see it here, if you don't believe it here, faith, if you don't believe it here, then you can say whatever you want to say, but it will not happen. You've got to have it here. You've got to believe it here. Do you really believe that by his stripes you're healed? Because you can say it and not believe it in the heart. But if you have it in your heart and then you say it, it will come to pass. Amen? Because the things we understand by faith that the world is framed by the word of God so that the things that you see are not made of things that are visible. They're made by faith. They're made by substance. They're made by the thoughts of God in your heart and when you speak him out 
they be, they, the substance from your heart begins to overtake that which is in the natural, and it comes to pass. Amen? So you've got to have it here. See, a lot of people that struggle in faith, they never have it here, and they say it, and they say it, and they say it. But you've got to have it here and then say it. Amen? You say, how do I do that? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Stay on that until you, until you it, it's the word of God. You've got you to gotta know the word of God, and then you've got to believe the word of God, and then you've got to make the word of God convinced in your heart that it's true. You convince your heart it's true. And then once you see it in your heart, then when you speak it out, I don't know how long it will take, but it will come to pass in Jesus' name. See, the, the battle is not with your mouth so much. If you want to see the supernatural and you want to see the miraculous, the battle's not so much with your mouth saying it. It's for you to humble yourself and to believe. I believe that word of God. I believe that, that all my needs will be met. I believe that God is able to, to provide for me. I believe that God is able to heal me. I believe I'm able to walk in divine health all the days of my life. And, but once you believe it here, then when you say it here, it's just a continual reinforcement over and over until finally. How, how many have been saved for a long, long time? I'm talking 25 years. Now, could, could I get you up here and put, uh, put you in a chair and interrogate you and make you believe you weren't going to heaven? There's no way on earth, right? No, I know where I'm going. Praise God. No, no, I don't know. How can you? Because, see, you've just become so solid in that that it's just like breathing. No, it's true. Praise God. By his blood, I'm going to heaven. He has, he has canceled my sin that I'm going. But, see, there's other promises that if I brought you up here in about 45 minutes, I could get you to come off of them, you know. No, I don't, well, I don't know. Yeah, well, I guess maybe. I, yeah, heal me, Lord, if it be thy will, you know. And you just get into all this muddy water stuff and, it's God's will. Jesus didn't take, th listen, it's God's will you're saved because Jesus died on a tree to save you. It's God's will for you to walk in health because by his stripes, he took those stripes so that you could be healed. And not only that, but all the diseases of the world entered into that body just like all the sins did. And he paid for them in full, in Jesus' name. And they are canceled in regard to you, in Jesus' name. Say praise the Lord. But see, it's got to it's got to be formed on the inside. You got to form this on the inside of you. The kingdom of God is within you. And then when you take it and you believe it, and you say, you know, I used to not believe it, but now I believe it. Every one of us, at one point in time in our life, from 12, 13 to whenever you got saved, or maybe you got saved early and you never did doubt it, but sometime you you didn't believe it and then you believe about Jesus raising up from the dead. But see, you form that in there. It's the same. I tell you, every promise of God, when you, when you see, and then it's not like you're surprised when it happens because you've already got it formed inside of you. It's, it's like uh, in Genesis. Go to, go to Genesis 1, 2. See, in Genesis, here's how God does things. And the earth, now this is after the judgment. This is when Satan's in the, there's no darkness in God. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Everybody agree? Is there any corruptness in God whatsoever? No. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So, this is after the judgment. This is when Satan, this is when Lucifer was cast down. Everything that he had jurisdiction over turns to chaos, black, dark. It's just like people's lives you see without the Lord, and they're just way off base. And, uh, and so here, here the Lord is. <clears throat> And he's looking at this, and it's a mess. But, it, but it, you know, it's, it's the judgment of Lucifer. And here's jurisdiction. But the Lord says, but I'm coming back, and I'm going to take the earth back. So the earth was without form. It was void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. But the Spirit of God was hovering over the, the face of the water. So here the, the Spirit of God, same Spirit of God in you, is hovering now over this mess. And then God said, out of himself, out of the Spirit of God comes this word, out of the inside of God comes this word saying, let there be light, right? See, but it came from the inside. That's how God does things. 
that the things that are seen are not made of things that are visible. All you could see was chaos, black, dark, waters, crazy chaos. But here comes this word out of the inside of God saying, let there be light. And see, now that the supernatural substance of God starts forming over that. Amen? That's the way it is in us. you got to have it here to speak it out. Say, I believe. I believe. Say, I believe the word of God. I believe. I have. The spirit, the spirit of faith. Of faith. Here's what it says in Hebrews. Looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher. The author and the finisher of our faith. When you look into the Lord, say, I can do all things. Do all things. Through, Christ, Through Christ, who strengthens me. Strengthens you absolutely can. But you got to believe it here. But once you believe it here, it's done. And then when you speak it out, then it's up to the power of God to bring all this stuff that's a mess and, and, and it's just all chaotic but he brings it back in, and then it starts forming by the Spirit of the Lord. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave.